people didn't know, right. uh, Martin Luther King was a Republican. Yes, so let's get was. back to our roots, okay? Yes, let's, let's get, get back, back to, to our roots. Either y'all can stay left or get right. Yes. Get right and, and change your party. And it's nothing wrong with coming off the Democratic plantation, yes. baby. <laughs> I love it. Well, obviously, the Democrats and Republicans have their history and their problems, but the Democrats really are the founders of the Klan. They really are uh, social engineers. They're very nasty people uh, yes. at the top. They're really using people. And look at how black unemployment's doubled under Obama, uh, worse than all the other unemployment. I mean, how, uh, how did that happen? That's, see, I don't even want to discuss how it happened because I haven't a clue. That's why we need to put somebody yeah. in the White House that want to bring our jobs back where our African Americans can thrive again in this country. Exactly. They won't have to be in poverty. They can obtain the middle class that's now. Right. And that's why we look at Donald Trump and exactly. that's why we stop for Trump, And stop just wanting the crumbs. Yes. So how, it's time for us to have a slice of the cake, yeah. not just the crumbs, that's not right. just handouts. That's All yeah. right, ladies, come back again with us, diamondandsilk.com. Very interesting. Thanks for being involved in the political process. God bless you. We'll be tuning in to you. Thanks for having us. Thank you, sweethearts. All right. You know, they got a little pin up of Donald Trump on the wall. <laughs> we'll be back. This is a protest, and this is a riot. If you can't tell the difference, then you are part of the problem. Infowars.com. I have a I began to get into iodine a few years ago because it was helping me and my family so much get healthy and detoxify. I believe our research is conclusive. This is the best iodine out there. And I know this for a fact, nobody else has got iodine based on these pure crystals, ladies and gentlemen. For a limited time, experience the ancient power of Survival Shield X2. I believe our research is conclusive. This is the best iodine out there. Take advantage of this at InfoWarsLife.com. And why wearing a Hillary for President t-shirt might get you punched in the face. They thought it said Hillary for President. He said, I was seconds away from sending my bar back over here to, to punch you in the face. Since you're wearing a Hillary for Prison shirt, you don't have to buy drinks here. Everything's on the house. Hillary for President! Hillary's not surging, I tell you that. They're not saying that. They're not saying that. Thank you. Have a Donald Trump endorses Hillary for prison. Get your Hillary for prison 2016 t-shirt at the InfoWars store. And on the back, it says legalize freedom. Show your disapproval of Hillary by buying your t-shirt today. But what she's done is criminal. This is an American president. Just add puppet, then vote and repeat every four years. Now, before everybody thinks that I'm here to stump for the Trump, let me just point out how I got a lot of flack earlier when I tweeted out about Donald Trump and how he is literally the elite that have bought off our politicians. He has a golden toilet in his apartment, people. If you don't believe me, just Google it for yourself. I think it's like lug Donald Trump's luxurious apartment. And you can see how all of the walls and the ceilings and everything, they're just covered in gold dripping in gold, and he admitted during the first GOP debate that he has bought off our politicians who he can call upon years later to do his bidding. So that's what I think about Trump. So it's no surprise now BuzzFeed is running this article, uh, kind of a hit piece on Trump saying, Trump once proposed that an A-team of CEOs negotiate U.S. trade policy with foreign nations. They talk about how in his, his book, Surviving at the top, Trump proposed giving constitutional authority to negotiate trade deals to an economic council that would be comprised of a smorgasbord of top business leaders from the 90s. In this book, Trump says, I think America should call on its corporate leaders, independent deal makers, and other 
non-political public figures who emerged during the past two decades to help forge a new relationship with the rest of the world. And it goes on to say some people who he would suggest uh, would be Jack Welch of GE, Disney's Michael Eisner, and CNN's Ted Turner, among others. So, of course, they're kind of putting this out here as a red flag, but really, <laughs> it's just the new puppet is going to be the same as the old puppet, because that's literally what the current administration is trying to fast track right now with President Obama's Trans-Pacific Partnership. There are 600 heads of corporations there at the negotiation table deciding what's going to be going on in this trade deal. Congress can't even see it. They can't debate on it. They can't make any amendments. And it's a living agreement. The president and the next president can change it as they wish. They can update it to cover any new issues, add any other countries that they want. You know, so this is a big deal. And yet it's all happening in secret. And hey, but Trump's the bad guy because he suggested it, you know, in the 90s. Now, here, here's a letter that came out a couple years ago from Doctors Without Borders. To just give you an idea about what they think, uh, you know, about these, um, some of the cables that have been released by WikiLeaks. They say, trading away health, the Trans-Pacific Partnership Agreement. And they, they're really concerned about the aggressive intellectual property rules that would restrict access to affordable, life-saving medicines for millions of people. It's proposed by U.S. negotiators. The IP rules enhance patent and data protections for pharmaceutical companies, dismantle public health safeguards that are enshrined in international law, and they obstruct price-lowering generic competition for medicines. So, of course, that's just one of the things that we've learned about the, T the TPP, how it's just a huge win for Big Pharma. And why? Because it's Big Pharma that's sitting at the negotiating table. And if you want to know what that's going to look like, just look at this story that's gone viral today. A lot of people have taken up to social media and they're very angry about this. Uh, they're calling him the most despised man in the world. This is Martin Shkreli. He's a 32-year-old ex-hedge funder, and he's the founder and chief of uh, Turing Pharmaceuticals. Now, Turing Pharmaceuticals purchased the rights to uh, Daraprim, which is a drug used by AIDS patients. They promptly raised the prices of this drug overnight by 5,500%. It was $1,350 a pill to now $750 per pill. Now, after all the backlash, Shkreli, he's just like a total schmuck. And you can go, he's like tweeting out all of these Wu-Tang things in response. He's, he's tweeting out Wu-Tang and, and, you know, look at him with his smug face. And he's basically saying that he did it because his company needs to turn a profit. And there's actually video of him responding to this where he's talking about how People use this drug for less than a year, and it's far below what other other pharmaceutical pharmaceutical companies are charging for their products that people have to take for much longer. So it's still majorly underpriced. He says they only pay a thousand dollars, where with other drugs they're paying hundreds of thousands of dollars for cancer medicines and things. So that's what this is going to look like if these sort of people can have the control. You, that you can no longer go and get the generic version of the drugs that you need to save your life. You can't go to Canada and get them because now this whole TPP living agreement is something that you need to be worried about. It's a massive surrender of sovereignty, hands it over to crony capitalism. And of course, it's a secretive deal threatening to cost Americans their jobs and hand big corporations new powers. And it's, you know, a big deal and here is a more in-depth... The Trans-Pacific Partnership trade package is beginning to unravel, with more prominent voices slamming President Obama and the Republican leadership over the secretive deal that threatens to cost American jobs and hand big corporations new powers that would violate national sovereignty. House Majority Whip Representative Steve Scalise of Louisiana and Rules Committee Chairman Representative Pete Sessions of Texas refused to reveal to Breitbart whether they had read the TPP agreement but still said they would support the Trade Promotion Authority and allow President Barack Obama to fast-track the TPP.
Lawmakers claim that TPA is separate from TPP and that they will review the final TPP agreement before it is considered by Congress. However, as Matthew Boyle explains, this explanation doesn't wash. A vote for the TPA is a de facto green light for the TPP since there is essentially no way to halt a trade deal once it has been fast-tracked. Boyle writes, since Fast Track was created in the Richard Nixon administration, not one trade deal that started on Fast Track has been thwarted. As such, a vote for TPA is a vote for TPP, since passing TPA will all but guarantee the successful passage of TPP. Senator Marco Rubio, Senator Lindsey Graham, and Representative John Boehner are also refusing to reveal if they have visited the secret room to read the controversial TPP document although all three are set to vote for the TPA. Daniel Horowitz, senior editor of the Conservative Review, writes, It is unforgivable for the Republican majority to shirk its congressional duty and refuse to read the text of a bill that will give Obama unprecedented authority over our economy. Passing a bill in order to find out what's in it is what placed the Pelosi Congress in the ash heap of history. It's not an auspicious path for ambitious politicians. The Washington Post reports the push from the president included direct calls to lawmakers, interviews with television stations in key states, and plans to bring several Democrats aboard Air Force One with him. Meanwhile, despite claims that climate change mandates would not be a part of TPP, President Obama admitted during an NPR interview on Wednesday that this would indeed be the case. By passing such mandates via the TPP, Obama could sneak through draconian climate regulations under the radar knowing that they would almost certainly be rejected by Congress on their own. This would satisfy calls by the likes of French Foreign Minister Laurent Fabius, a Bilderberg member, to enforce the new rules via global treaties to cut Congress out of the equation. Obama will attend summit in Paris in December to negotiate a climate agreement. Howard Richman writes, Obama would not need to get Congress to approve the unfair climate change treaty terms that he negotiates. Instead, he could get the commission set up by the Trans-Pacific Partnership Agreement to add those terms to the Trans-Pacific Partnership. After that, the investor-state dispute settlement provision set up by that agreement could enforce Obama's terms through the threat of multi-billion dollar fines upon the U.S. government. Physicians are rallying as they become increasingly concerned about the passage of TPP. Prescription drug costs could waylay the affordability of biologics, and thousands of prescription drugs by drastically altering intellectual property protections. Under the TPP, corporations could sue countries for restricting their products due to legislation brought to fruition by their own government policies. The investor state dispute settlement portion of the TPP gives the upper hand. Legislative bodies would only act as advisory boards to the ruling corporatic governments. Most recently, the World Trade Organization Tribunal ruled against the United States in a NAFTA suit brought by Canada and Mexico that claimed the U.S. country of origin labeling law, which requires foreign meat to be labeled as such, is an unfair and illegal trade practice. The WTO's May 18th ruling was the fourth time in three years that the global court had ruled against cool. Even though U.S. courts had ruled that cool is legal, faced with WTO penalties and threats of retaliation, the U.S. Congress is now considering repeal of cool, and American consumers may soon lose the ability to discover if the meat at the grocery store or restaurant is U.S. raised or from Mexico, Brazil, or China. Critics of the TPP assert that the trade deal will cost American jobs and give huge corporations the power to change U.S. laws. That's it for the show tonight. Thank you for joining us. Hit the subscribe button if you're watching us on YouTube. We will see you here again tomorrow, 7 p.m. Central. A clean, toxic-free body is the foundation of true health. Introducing Deep Cleanse by InfoWarsLife.com, a scientifically formulated blend of nanocolloidal zeolites and organic ingredients that aid the body in cleansing chemicals and toxic metals. Using our proprietary multi-step extraction technology, Deep Cleanse is our most affordable all-in-one cleanser. With concentrated organic compounds like cilantro, milk thistle, fulvic acid, orange peel, zeolites, and others, Deep Cleanse doesn't hold back. Instead of buying five, six, or even seven different
different cleansing products. We use decades-old scientific research to put together the Rolls-Royce of all-in-one cleansing. Look, there's a reason Deep Cleanse is the only product on the market that uses our proprietary Spigerex herbal processing technique. We use only the highest quality organic herbs backed by serious research, and we still bring it to you at the best price out there. If you wish to find Deep Cleanse and experience the all-in-one cleansing, visit InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139. You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. And your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide.